Hey guys, version 3252 is out now and you can grab it at GoodoDragonBones.com. In this video, I'll give you a quick rundown of all the new features and in future videos, I'll be going over requested topics in depth. So be sure to subscribe and comment down below and let me know which topics you'd like me to delve into next. Okay, so let's get started. The first topic I want to go over are the changes you'll need to make to your project if you're moving over from a 3251 project. So the first thing that changed um, is the namespace for the fade out enums uh, has changed. So where you used to be able to do uh, gd dragon bones dot uh, fade, I believe it was fade out something all, right? Uh, the namespace or the class that you're accessing these through, you're going to change these to GD armature display. Let's see, you'll have your fade out all and all your fade out things here. Um, what else? The animation signature has changed. So last video, I showed you how to deal with animation events. Well, I've had to change the signature again, and this will be the last time it changes. So uh, we're, we, let's connect this rig to dragon, oops, I want to dragon anim event self and then anim event. And what you're going to see here is now that the signature is now an event and it's returned a new uh, details dictionary dictionary I misspelled that probably but no I spelled it right all right so um, this is a new signature uh, if you want to know what's inside uh, I will have a link in the description to the source code where you can get the precise um, what what is contained within that dictionary it, it has the armature that called it because now we have nested armatures and it has um, all the old information inside. So animation name, event name, all of that stuff. There'll be a link down below. You can just go check it out. So now another thing that's changed and this is just a general change. The entire structure of how you kind of use everything has changed a little bit. So there might be some minor differences on how old code used to work. So you used to access everything through. Um, so rig is the demo rig here and that's my dragon bones object so rig is that so you used to do everything that was like play from time or play new animation now you're going to be accessing everything through rig.get armature and on here now you can get you can get slots you can get slots you can get bones you can get uh you can get all sorts of stuff from here you can get bones you can get slots you can change colors all of it's done on the armature itself and this allows for other stuff uh, with nested armatures and some of the other features we're going to be going over so uh, with that said that's about all the differences between the previous version and this one so um, since we were just talking about the new structure let's get into it so the idea behind the new api structure was to provide a simple interface for interacting with pretty much all the components in a dragon bones project so this is going to give us many more pop possibilities for just playing with your rigged animations uh, through code. So um, before I go through um, specifically how to do stuff within Godot Dragon Bones, I'm going to go into just quickly what a Dragon Bones project is made of um, in case you don't know. Um, your entire file is called an armature. So you see how when you create it, it's always called armature. Um, that is basically like a skeleton with all everything defined underneath it. So now the armature itself has, has bones, as you can see, and the bones have slots inside them. Each individual slot can have multiple displays and it will display one at a time. So within the slot, you can put three things inside. You can put an image, just a basic image, like uh, here, here's an image. I can put an image inside this slot and he'll be holding an image. You can also put a mesh in this slot. Uh, so when you click this mesh button, you see it becomes a mesh. That's a different data type and it has different values, but 
just so you know, you can put an image and a mesh. The third type that you can put in, into here is an armature itself. So this is what they call child armatures within the slots. This is the main feature that all of these other changes kind of cascaded around. So in giving access to child armatures, I needed to give access to everything else. So that's the basic dragon bone structure. So let's, um, let's, I'll show you quickly how you would do something like this. So notice how the, the one difference between this structure and what I expose through, uh, Godot dragon's bones, dragon bones API is that I've flattened bones and slots onto the armature level for now. Um, because you're thinking of these two things independently. You don't really manipulate the slot directly. Usually when you're doing animations, you're manipulating the bones. Uh, with the slots, you're going to be wanting to mostly switch these around and change colors. So um, that's it. So as I showed in the, in the previous little section, you're going to want to do that through rig.getArmature. This is the top level of your file. If you want to access a bone, you can get bone by name. So bone name goes here and the bone position has three main things. You could, with the bone right now, you can manipulate the position. You can manipulate the rotation, set bone rotation, and you can also change the scale and you can do that directly. And what this does is it puts this on top of the current animation pose. So when, if there's a key that resets any of these values within your animation, it's going to rewrite these values. This, um, this doesn't affect the root pose either. So that's, that's how you would do that. Um, inside the demo project that, uh, the links down below you, you, there's live links and everything else. You're going to see me using, uh, this GitHub bone it goes around in a circle. And I chose specifically this GitHub bone because uh, if you look inside here, it's over, this is where it, its root is, and the code is for it to go into a circle. So when you set posi position on a bone through this, it's based on the, and the, the GitHub bone's um, rest position. So if you look in the code, I'm just rotating around a point um, with 300 radius, and it rotates around its, its uh, resting pose position and you have to keep that in mind that's everything you need to know about how to manipulate bones um, the next thing I want to go over is uh, manipulating uh, IK constraints so this one here there's not much to it uh, there's just a little bit of finagling you have to do inside um, inside dragon bone so you notice here I have uh, a bunch of IKs um, within Godot acting on different bones here. See, I go like this and I can move all of this around, wave them around. So um, to create an IK, uh, in case you don't know, you click the bone and you click, uh, click a bone that doesn't have an IK on it, like this one, and you click this button or one of these buttons. Um, but there are other Dragon Ball tutorials for that. The important part is you're going to get these IK targets on the right side here. The name that we're rent or that you need to reference within the Godot Dragon Bones API is not the name up here. It's not right leg IK up here. It's this one here. So when you if you create a new IK, quick, you'll see that it the name of it doesn't match the name the the thing up up top. So you'll want to make sure to rename your IK here. With that out of the way, so if you look here, um, I have this head IK and I've named it head IK here and this controls the head inside the demo project itself. I have it so that it will set the IK position to the uh, mouse position or so that it looks towards mouse, mouse position. So what you need to do is to get the offset between uh, where you need to set the IK position. Uh, you'll, you, you use global mouth, mouse position by rig position because again, it's a you're, you're giving it a local position within the animation. So you just give it the offset. And you set that IK constraint 
So inside the demo project, you'll see his head follows my mouse around wherever I go. And if I want to change, show you that it works for any IK, we'll go here. This is the same file. Let's take um, the right arm IK and move it here and script. And we will just put that there, play with that. And see now my right arm follows wherever my mouse goes. This could be very useful for um, many things. I can think of many things that this could be useful for. Anyways, um, that's IK constraint manipulation. I think that's enough information on that. The next feature, the main feature, this is the PS de resistance, is uh, child armatures. So a uh, relatively unique feature within Dragon Bones um, and the software that um, is its ability to nest the um, armatures within slots in armature so you can make these go nest as far as you want so in dragon bones this looks like this so you see i have multiple different things here and each one of these have their own animations to put an animation into a slot within dragon bones all you have to do is take the armature out of here drag it into the slot and you have it there and there you go now you have a now we have a hat animation and that's how you do that within Dragon Bones. Once you're in Dragon Bones itself, um, you can now play with each one of these individually. So let's, uh, just to show you here, I can click Armature 1 side here, click Run, and hit Play Animation. Now this person is running independently of what the parent is doing. And on top of this, so let's say we're here, this character is inside the gun slot here. You can take this gun slot and recolor it any way you want. And this is a modulate co color. It's uh, kind of uh, like a multiply. So it doesn't apl necessarily apply to every level. This hat is also a separate set of things. So if we go into the hat slot, we can here. Yeah. Okay. So it's working. Uh Oh, <laughs> so you can manipulate every individual piece inside here. So let's go back into here, go here, and now to make it a little bit clearer, let's go here. And if you look, we can take the head and we can make just the head invisible. Go inside here and just say, I want to be red today. And you can change just one piece of the armature. There's lots of stuff you can do. You can put, um, if you go inside here, you can put a gun inside and you can have two separate things that could control the gun firing so bam 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 blam 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 so yeah um, that's child armatures uh inside the code child armatures you're going to you're going to be looking at here not here so this is some logic here that you're going to want to look into but where is child armature oh get, get current armature is in here so um, the main level armature is this one here and child armatures look like this So you're going to get armature. You're going to get the slot where you, you the child armatures are um, Imagine this says Like uh, this would be like gun slot. I, I just have a, a dictionary. This would be gun slot and Then get child armature if the display is currently displaying an image or a mesh get child armature will return null point, uh, null value there we go and that's how you would get the current armature um, in this demo code and then on that armature you have all of the same functions as everything else so get child, child armature is of same type as get armature so you you have all the same functions so all of these other functions they apply the same way as you would on the top level now one thing uh, i'm going to show you just Further for bones, um, what you can we can do is we can say scale here, add this, and you'll see once we go back to the game, it screwed up. Five hundred. 
There we go. And then you can do all sorts of stuff just with, with a single bone. And that, my friends, is Godot Dragon Bones 3252. And that's about everything I have to show you today. So uh, thanks for sticking it out to the end. Uh, if you liked what you saw, want to see more, uh, be sure to let me know what you think and what you'd like me to cover next in the comment section down below. Or you can always join me on my Discord server. Um, links are on the webpage and probably in the description down below as well. Uh, I do have fairly big ambitions for this project, but it does require interest and support to make it possible. So if you would like to show your support, consider donating a little pocket change. Links in the description as well. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.